Right, right. I love it. Um, or well, well, tell me just quickly, briefly about uh, the, the win in 2012. You know, when I looked at it, you were a mile behind. And, and obviously, you did that thing where you, you come from behind. But you, you also have that thing that we, we see where you look around a lot. You know, like it's, it's not something that I would ever coach. It's not something yeah. that I, I would encourage. <laughs> But it seems to work for you, and you know, like just hey, let him go if if that's if that's what works. Has anyone tried to out coach you? You know, coach that out of you? Yeah, I think so. You know, like um, <laughs> I guess Andrea a little bit when I was with him, he, he tried to. You know, I think twenty seventeen was a good year. I didn't look around too much, uh, just a little bit underwater. But uh, we used to have a rule only one, once or twice per fifty. You know, so uh, I mean, I. I try to cut it out, but I think sometimes I, I'm always very aware of where everyone is in the race, whatever I'm swimming. So, you know, I'm always, even if they're in lane one, I'm always kind of looking over just to make sure I know where they are. You know, otherwise they're ahead of me or they're behind me, you know. But, uh, yeah, I think London was London was quite simple because we had prepared for that race. We knew what to do. It was very simple. Just swim with him, love behind him and beat him at the end. It was simple. It was what we, it was what we wanted to do. It was what we prepared for for many, many 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 months, many years even, like of 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 uh, of even visualize, you know visualizing it actually. Um, so when it was happening, it was so weird because I was like, I can't believe what's actually happening. I'm like, surely I'm not going to beat him, you know. Like I'm saying to myself, you know, with 25 to go, I'm like, I actually, yeah, I'm probably going to beat him. I'm like, no <laughs> ways, I'm actually going to beat Michael Phelps. Like in my mind, it was just going slow motion. I was just like, obviously, I was trying to catch him at everything I could, and sure, a bit of fortune at the end. Um, you know, the last five meters. But I think at the end of the day, that was something that I'd seen in my mind a million times. You know, that exact race, him being next to me, it was perfect. It was it was destiny. You know, that was really destiny for me. And I think, uh, you know, two years before that 2010, my first gold, uh, Turner Fly short course, when I won the world, uh, world title, 18 years old, the same thing happened. I touched fifth at 25 to go. If you watch that race, it's very hard to get, actually. I won by five and hundredths of a second. The world record holder, Kayo Almeida, was on in lane six. And the fastest man in the world, Laszlo Shea, was in lane four at the time for short course. And I was in lane five, right? Oh. And the same thing happened in London, right? Where Phelps, the world record holder, lane six, and the fastest man at the time that year was, was Takeshi Matsuda in four. Mm. It finished the exact same way, five one hundred ahead. And two days before, four and immediately, I got fifth to Ryan Lochte in that race. Oh wow! And the same thing happened. It was almost it was the weirdest thing ever. Like when I got fit in that four medley, my mate said to me, "My mate Lee Chang, and he said he said you, you're going to win this two fly because the same thing happened, you know, 18 months wow. ago in Dubai." Wow! So it was weird. It was just uh, you know, day job moment. You you've never been devastated by a loss necessarily. Like you know, finishing fifth and obviously planning to win that race, but then coming back a couple of days later and and winning the 200 fly. How 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 do you respond to losses? You know, I think, um, I don't know, I've always said you don't you don't really judge a man's character for how he actually celebrates victory. You know, you judge it for when his back's against the wall. So for me, that's what I always go by. And uh, yeah, it was a tough one. Look, at the end of the day, I was, you know, it wasn't the worst result fifth, you know, but I expected at least a medal. So I was quite disappointed. Um, but then there's nothing I can do about that. You know, I think I've had much more devastating losses in life and in swimming, you know, than, 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 than that. And uh at the end of the day, there's nothing you can really do. You know, you just got to come out being positive. You got to come out swinging. You know, that's all, that's always what I do. Um, but you start questioning you know, things, it, right? Like if you if you're expecting to win, you finish fifth, and you start questioning, have I done enough work? Did I do the right training? You start to doubt yourself, right? Doubts start to creep sure. in. So how did those doubts not creep in for the 200 fly, or, or did they? And how did you get rid of them? You know what? I don't I don't I don't remember too much of that because it was such a bit of a blur that that week. But I just remember swimming the heats. <clears throat> swimming 155.3, but like really casual. I think I had Tyler, Tyler Clary next to me, he just out touched me, but like I was swimming within myself, you know. Mm. And then the semi final that night had Matsuda, you know, a guy that's nearly beaten Phelps for the last decade, you know, come close so many times. He just out touched me, and I did a new record 154.2, and I knew with respect, like he's not beating me tomorrow night. I said, I don't know what Michael and these boys are doing, but I said, he's not beating me. Like I had. I had a bit left in the tank, you know, and, and uh, yeah, it was, it was from there. I kind of was like, wow, okay, I'm swimming like this now, you know, I'm going to be faster tomorrow. I don't know what that, what that means necessarily. I, I hate to focus on the time because I feel like whenever I focus on times, I never do it. Whenever right. I focus on trying to break a world record or break a PB, it just never happens. You know, mm -hmm. it just never, ever happens. So I think I just focused on the, 
the process, focus on the race. Um, you know, I didn't really worry too much. I was, I was excited. I was excited to race Michael. It was my last race against Michael because he was retiring. I mean, he, he announced it before. So if I ever wanted to beat him, that was my moment, you know? So how, how did Michael react to the, <clears throat> to the loss just between you and him? You know what? He was very, I must be honest. He was very cool about it. Uh, I mean, obviously he wasn't happy, <laughs> you know, right afterwards, but he, you know, he, he took it like a, like a man. And, uh, you know, he, uh, I remember in the, in the, the, what do you call it? The ceremony room, you know, when yeah. you're sitting on the chairs there and I remember him sitting there, um, you know, second, you know, you got the silver, gold and bronze. And then they were both sitting there and I just walked in and I was like, Oh my gosh, like, I just, I just, I just won it. You know what I mean? Mm. I almost like started crying backstage. I actually did. And I was like, Oh dude, don't cry for the Phelps, man. Don't do this. <laughs> and I was like, I can't believe that I've just beaten him. You know? And it was, uh, it was an amazing moment because, you know, again, I say this, like I'd, I'd seen this in my dreams, in my, in my, in my, you know, in the shower, driving in the car. Like I just, that's what I, what I wanted, you know, I wanted to beat Phelps. I just wanted, you know, I wanted to, uh, I wanted to be like him, you know, and I think um, that's, uh, it all, in that moment, it kind of really hit, hit home, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Big moment for you, the country, for, you know, your family. I mean, yeah, but but I love the fact that uh, the dream became a reality, and then it hits you, it slaps you in the face when you walk into that you know, the mental ceremony room, and they're, they're just sitting it's there. Crazy, like, man! What a feeling! It's unbelievable, man! It's yeah. crazy. It was crazy. I almost felt like I didn't know what to say because I was like almost like not embarrassed, but I was like, dude, I just ah, I worshipped you guys, and I'm like yeah. beating it. I'm like, dude, I don't know what to do yet, you know? Yeah. But they were very nice about it. He was look, he was. You know, uh, he, he knew how I felt about him, you know, going to Olympics. Like, I, you know, we both were sponsored by Mega Ambassadors. So, like, we'd, we'd met, you know, before in, in America that, like, earlier that year. And I don't think he knew that I was coming for him. <laughs> That's, he didn't know. But, I mean, he, I had so much respect for him, adoration. And, you know, you know, he was that, that's what it was for me.